All right, here we go. Fucking finally. Anyway, it the Hello and welcome, ghouls and other creatures of the night. This may be part two of the uh, special kind of videos. Now, obviously, as you can see here, this is Depression Quest. That though. I will talk about why I played these two games uh, after I've gone through them, but for now, let's just go with it, yeah? Let's see. Confirm action, one passage, advanced passage. It is early on a Monday morning. Uh, you are a mid-twenties human being. You have a significant other named Alex, who you are rather, rather fond of, that you have been seeing exclusively for the past few months. The rest of your social circles consists of a variety of friends and acquaintances, some of whom you've uh, you met at your day job, which is a little boring, but pays the rent. You'd like to do more with your life, as your as would your parents, but you're still in the process of figuring what it means and how to go about it. You're also dealing with motivation issues that sometimes makes dealing with these things difficult. You feel like this is probably your fault, and on bad days, you can feel inwardly angry and down on yourself for being lazy, but you're not quite sure how you can break out of it. Or how other people deal with these feelings that seem so very functional. You spend a lot, a lot of nights fixating and, and thinking about this, but never seem to do anything about it other than lose sleep. It's an, it's an unseasonably warm Wednesday evening. You spent the past several hours at work. The past week or so, you found your job motivation flagging more than usual. You've been in a fog practically all day today, simply going through the motions without realizing even what you've been doing half the time, and yet seem to be moving at half speed. You're so checked out that when your boss approaches you to tell you that it's dead and you can go home early, it barely registers. Uh, as you walk home, the streets hiss from the recent rainfall. You know that your significant other will be in classes until late, uh, the copper hours at least. We you consider this uh, serendipitous solitude to catch up on that project you've been working on haphazardly for the past few months. As soon as you think about the work that awaits you at home, you can feel Panic creeping in from the back of your brain, unbidden, right? Something like that. Uh, all you can think about is how incredibly far behind you are, and the amount of work that seems nothing less. Excuse me, sorry, I'm yawn. Uh, uh, nothing less than earn some amount of all. By the time you arrive home, you change out of your comfortable work clothes. The stress is is weighing down on you like heavy, like a heavy wet wool blink. Your computer says you're staring you down from your desk. You want to sit down and work, but the mere thought of trying to work sets your stress levels flying. More than anything, you feel suddenly and absolutely exhausted. You feel a strong desire to simply hide in bed. Do you? At the my eyes are burning. Directly like, sit down at your desk and try to make yourself do something. Turn on TV, then you can a quick half hour to unwind from work. Call it to bed, you're so stressed and love one, you couldn't possibly accomplish anything anyway. 
Your depressed interaction is exhausting and you are becoming more and more withdrawn. You're currently not seeing a therapist. You're currently not taking medication for depression. Honestly, what I would do, I think I would do this. It's a half hour of TV, you tell yourself. I have something grabbing the grasp me for the remote. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't so much sit down on the couch as sink into it. You turn on the TV and start going through the usual general routine. After a few cycles of this, you realize you're not really doing. You're not really not doing much more than whatever, some or something. Absolutely. And absolutely killing time. You check the clock and see that over 20 minutes has already passed to set down. As your self imposed time loop creeps over ever nearer, you become more and more anxious. You stand up and walk to the fridge, telling yourself, I'll just make a quick sandwich and get to work after that. Can't be productive on an empty stomach, right? As you sit, as you eat, you start pacing around your apartment, heading past your bedroom in the process. You stop in the doorway as if physically unable to cross, cross the threshold. Familiar waves of exhaustion start racking you and you feel simultaneously, simultaneously tired and panicked. Close your door and head back to the couch. It's still early yet, you tell yourself. As long as I get to work in an hour, I'll have plenty of time to be productive. As you flip through, as you flip channels and let the CSI and Jeopardy reruns wash you over, you sink deeper over you. You sink deeper into the couch, feeling at once enroged upon and shielded by the quite uh, and being quite literally swallowed up by it. As the second hour draws nearer, you sure enough find yourself getting anxious and jittery. You repeat the fridge pace couch. Uh, process a couple more times before you look at the clock and realize sev that several hours have passed and that's probably because you managed to get no work done. <laughs> you crawl into bed acutely aware of the fact that you have work in the morning and that any opportunity you had to catch up on your creative endeavors today has squandered. You feel like so dis disgusted with yourself that when Alex calls to talk to you on her way home from class, you simply say that you had a really rough day at work and you're trying to rest up before your shift tomorrow. She sound, she says she understands and wishes you a good night. Though you can't help but notice she sounds slightly disappointed. <laughs> Ironically, the stress of potentially upsetting your partner compounds with the stress of not having gotten anything done this evening. And the stress of having to go to work tomorrow. Buzzing of anxiety in your brain melts together with your body's utter physical exhaustion, and you sink into a semi hip, uh, hip, I don't know, fuck, anxious funk. Too tired to try and work, but too anxious to fall asleep for several hours. <laughs> you are very depressed, you spend a large time. Sleeping, killing yourself, and have very little energy. Wow. Calls <laughs> you from wonderful classes and this completely awesome birthday party tonight in her apartment. <laughs> you hung out with this roommate a few times with Alex, and you get along well enough, but you aren't particularly close. <laughs> oh, my nose! You don't have work in the morning and have nothing else in particular to do tonight. You're feeling kind of run down, but you have fatigued most of the time lately. <laughs> I have been fatigued, my apologies. You mentioned that you're feeling ill because you're not sure how else to explain those feelings to someone else. And you say that you aren't sure you can make it. Sense. There's a second of silence over your phone, but you can swear you, you can hear the sound of your brother's face fall. <laughs> She tries to convince you anyway, you haven't seen her this week and she sounds pretty insistent that you come over. She even drops a few suggestively worded hints that you can stay over with them tonight after the party. Oh, 
Damn, I can't even do that. Uh, you're good to go even though you're not really feeling social. You know, it's important to Alex and you'd really like to see her. Seeing her does make you feel better sometimes and you hope that this is the case tonight even if it does mean dealing with all the usual social anxiety. Uh, the time to leave rolls around and you grab your overnight bag. Alex's apartment is a short walk away and there are already people hanging out on the porch. You feel your chest tighten and as you approach the building and try to steal your nerves. You quickly find your partner chatting away with the birthday girl and Alex immediately lines up when she sees you. I'm so happy you came, I wasn't sure if you were going to make it. A young man taps her on the shoulder and she turns back to you and to apologize and lets you know they have to do something for the party. Alex hands you a beer and plans to get started trick before going off to the deal without a game up. As you look around, you don't see anyone else you recognize. Ito. Let's do that. You take your beer and shift to the car to you arrive at Alex's room. The room is actually empty of all uh, the, the other empty of other party goers and you sit on her bed as you set your back down. Thankful for the personal space and feeling a lot less claustrophobic, you mess around on your phone while you sip your beer. You keep telling yourself to go back in, out in five more minutes, but every time the time rolls around to go back, you feel the panic creep in and you stay rooted out to the spot. You figure no one knows, uh, here knows you anyway, so it's unlikely that you'll be missed. Uh, a few minutes later, Alex wa uh, comes to the room. Oh, there you are. I was wondering where you'd gone off to. Figured I might find you here. Uh, she sits down on the bed next to you, buzzed enough to be slurred slightly. I'm really glad you turned up tonight. To be honest, I really didn't think you'd show. It's really cool you did, really. You know you seem like that lovingly, but you're not quite sure how you feel about that statement. It's a little afternoon, uh... On a muggy Saturday. That's a that's the wrong way to do afternoon. By the way, there's no space. Well, it's, it's afternoon. I don't know. But anyway, that though, your mother has come over for a surprise visit. Claiming loudly that she doesn't see you now, so she decided to go. Uh, decided to invite herself over. As you converse, she walks around your place, and you get this distinct impression that you're being inspected. So, what's going on with you lately? She asks abruptly. Taken somewhat aback by this left fielder, you're, you tell her you're not sure of what, what she means. Uh, she repeats the question, saying that you haven't seemed like yourself lately. She just did the dirty dishes piled in the sink and notes that uh, notes the fact that you haven't called or visited in a while. <laughs> Your reticence, I think I'm saying it right, I don't know. Uh, only seems to spur her on more. She passes you, uh, asking if you're having problems at work or with Alex, and you're beginning to feel increasingly battered by her sudden, well meaning but overwhelming inquisition. Under her questions, you, became, you become increasingly uncomfortable. You want to be able to explain to her how you fe you've been feeling, but the truth is, you're not really sure yourself. Nothing horrific has happened at work, or with your significant other, or friends, or anything like that. But all the, the, all the same time, you can't deny that lately you, you've just feel, felt drained and that still you're not really here. You wish you could tell your mother these things, but she hasn't been approachable by, about negative emotions in the past. She is the kind of person who will hold the opinion that the solution to any problem is to simply try harder and maintain a positive attitude. A stance that has reared its head in past conversations when you've begun to explore the subject with her. You know she's unlikely to be understanding that you feel the energy drain out of you when you imagine what would happen if you managed to blur out everything you are feeling.
I wonder how long this game is actually. Uh, I'm okay, mom. Really, thanks for worrying about me. Your mother looks at you from across the room uh, with furrowed brows, and you wonder if the tone in your voice was at the least bit convincing. She slightly opens her mouth as though she was about to say something more, but instead she digs into her purse for her cell phone, having apparently decided against it. Well, as long as you're okay, honey. Her voice trails. As your mother returns to what amounts to more or less small talk, you realize that this part of the conversation has happened a lot recently. Someone will express concern for you or ask if you're okay out of no seemingly nowhere. You f tend to find that it's simply to just declare that you're okay that, and then find the right words for complicated and murky feelings. Besides, it's none of them are in reaction to a specific event. Maybe you really are okay and just complain about nothing anyway. Sometimes when you insist that you're okay to those who ask, you have to wonder if you're trying to convince them or yourself. Fuck man, this is actually getting... This is... Actually fucking relatable, honestly. I was gonna wait for... Till after the video's end, or the game's over. But... This... Feels... Real. I mean, yeah, it says interactive non-fiction but honestly this is the kind of thing I've gone through you know um, a lot of times I don't know what to say to people when they ask how I'm feeling you know and so I just brush it off and, and I tell them I'm okay and everything and sometimes I wonder if I'm trying to convince myself, or if I'm trying to convince them, you know? Um, you know, with the feelings I even have and everything, with all the thoughts I go through in my head, I've gotten into the same kind of situation where uh, I don't even know if I want to be social with a lot of people, you know? So, most of the time, I like I try to avoid it. I try to avoid going to parties or, you know, just being anywhere where there's a lot of people that, that I could potentially meet. You know, um, and I've lived through this for for years. Um, I've dealt with, with bullying, I've dealt with the loss of, of friends, of pets, of family, and it's taken a huge toll on me. There was even a, a point in time where I used to actually uh, hurt myself because of how depressed I've been. I, I mean, I'm still, I still battle with depression to this day, you know, but with what I've been doing recently with with streaming and making these videos it's actually helped me a little bit you know I, I appreciate having even the smallest community you know having 200 followers on Twitch having almost 200 subscribers on YouTube it makes me feel good because I have people there to to support me in in this you know um but the actual goal for my channels is to reach out to other people you know because i don't like hearing about all these other people who, who hurt themselves who get into these addictions you know get into abusive relationships or even, you know, uh, committing suicide, you know, I, I don't like it, it's, it upsets me, I've been down a dark path, and in a way I regret it, 
because it's it wasn't the right path to go. But at the same time, I I'm kind of thankful for it because if it wasn't for that, then I would not have met amazing friends. I would not have made. I would not have decided to do uh, YouTube and and Twitch. You know, I probably would not have been here if it wasn't for that path. You know. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's something I recommend. It's definitely not something I recommend. But you know, I want to. What I want to do is, I want to use these channels to build a community and and reach out to people who go through things like this. You know, so that way they can come to me for any advice, so that they they can have somebody else who knows and understands what it's like. To deal with depression, to deal with anxiety and stuff like that, you know. Um, and so, if if anything, you guys can come to me if you need anything, you know. I'll do the best that I can. Um, I just hope that with the cuts that I make and everything, I can at least, you know. Cheer you up a bit with with at least a smile. I, I, I mean, I may not be the funniest. I may not be, not be the best at gaming or whatever, but I'm here for you, honestly. And you know, I want to be able to reach out and help out. I want to be able to help people from all over the world with this stuff. And that's the point of these videos, these current videos. This was because today is supposed to be、uh, World Mental Health Day or something like that, and that's what this is about. This, that's what these two games have been about: depression quest, it's a mental health issue.、Uh, Dark Factor, I think it was supposed to be about paranoia or something like that. I couldn't tell exactly, but I'm sure. Someone would let me know what that is, you know. But yeah, the the point of the video is just to help、uh, people understand what it's like, so that way they can help、uh, and keep an eye and, and look for the signs of 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 people with depression and everything before it, it's too late, you know. It's a deep, deep conversation to have with your friends and your family. You have to be there for each other. I'm gonna be there for you. That's why I call you guys my ghoul fam. That's honestly the community I want to build. I want it to be like a family for us to be there with each other or for each other. Anyway, back to the game, I suppose. <laughs>、uh, it's a lazy Sunday morning. You are idly clicking around online as your phone rings. Sam, a worker, a coworker of yours that you're friendly with, asks how many you are and makes her leave.、Uh, oh, asks how you are. I don't know why. Anyway,、uh, and makes her small talk with you. You typically only ever talk to him on the phone. When one of you needs a shift covered, so it's、uh, slightly awkward. You're waiting in anticipation for him to ask you to come in on short notice when he veers the conversation in a completely different direction. How do you feel about cats? He asks. Mine had kittens a few weeks ago, and I have an awfully hard time finding a home for at least one of the litter. You don't have any pets, right? Takes you a, mo a moment to process this new information, and you're caught off guard as he begins to earnestly try to sell you on the idea. My apologies, I did. I hit my headset mic on my other mic.、Uh, anyway, 
Take some moments to process this new information and you're caught off guard as he begins to earnestly try to sell you on the idea of taking the last kitten off his hands. It's not something you had specifically considered before, but he seems fairly insistent. Uh, she's a real sweetheart, really loves people, she's got all the shots already taken care of, and the vet said she's as healthy as a horse. I can bring her over by your place, Donna, if you're interested. You look around your apartment trying to picture a cat in it as he continues to tell you about how cute she is. You tell him that this is all Kyle, uh, kind of, uh, all, this is all kind of sudden. Oh, I don't know why it took me so long to process and read that, but anyway, in that you don't have anything for the kid set up here. But don't worry about that, I can bring over a litter box and food and all that since you'd really be helping me out of a fix. It's the least I could do. I just don't want to have to put her, put her in, a, in a shelter. You can't help but feel like you're being guilt tripped but you decide to give it some serious consideration. It does often uh, get awfully lonely around your apartment and it might, be le it might feel less empty with a cat around. However, since you've been feeling down, it might not be a good idea to take on the responsibility of a cat even if they are fairly low maintenance. We're gonna become a cat owner. I personally am a cat owner. I got my cat from the shelter. Um, and honestly, I chose her because of the fact that uh, the people at the shelter had said that her her brother was already adopted before her. So in a way, I kind of felt bad uh, because she was basically alone in there you know her brother was not there anymore somebody else had already adopted him so I didn't want her to to be alone like that you know and I've raised and up to this point I've raised her for three years uh, she's currently three years old and I'm proud of her we have a great, great relationship with each other. Tight bond. Uh, you, you can accept the offer of the kitten and hang up shortly after making a razor for when your co-worker can drop her off tonight. You're not entirely uh, sure what to expect and you spend the rest of the afternoon re researching cat care online and trying to think of a name. Uh, the evening rolls around and you hear a knock on, at your door, starting to go out of reading Wikipedia entirely too hard. You take possession of a small, terrified black and white kitten in a carrier along with everything you need to start taking care of her. You take her to your bedroom, close the door, and open the door to the carrier excitedly. She cowers in the back of it and you back off. Feeling slightly defeated, you remember what you researched on introducing the kitten to a new home and leave her alone to go mess around on your computer. Hopefully checking over your shoulder every so often to see if she has come out yet. Uh, she hides inside her carrier periodically, making sorrowful cat howls long enough for you to start worrying that she ha that already doesn't like you. But by the time you go to bed, she's curled up at the foot of it, dying nervously before falling asleep. Uh, over the next few days, you gain, you gain her trust and she begins affectionately following you around, sleeping on you and hopping up on you. Anytime you sit down to do the work, to do some work. And cats, they do take, they do, it does take time for them to get used to things, their uh, environments and the people in them. So that, so that is, that is very, very accurate. That is very, very true. Uh, it's it's late after Friday afternoon and quitting time is just around the corner. A bright clear day is giving way to a still separate evening. You can hear your co-workers all around you. You anxiously make uh, uh you can hear your co-workers all around you anxiously making plans for their evenings and weekends, so it's you're really looking forward to just going home and resting after what's turned out to be a very long and taxing work week. 
uh, just before the end of your shift, you get a call from Alex. It seems a group of your mutual friends are heading out to a nearby pub for dinner and drinks to celebrate the end of the week. And they want to know if you'd like to come along. You tentatively tell her that you're mostly exhausted from work, from the work week, and a social outing like that would just take too much out of your day. You encourage her to go and have a good time, since you know it's been a while she's gone out with friends, which the effort feels futile since you know she isn't going to go without you. A couple hours later, the two of you find yourselves in a familiar position. On the couch, watching comedy shows on Netflix, a box of pizza open on the coffee table in front of you. As you look across the couch at her, you start to feel anxious. Uh, you feel bad about uh, effectively forcing the two of you to stay in tonight again. While you are always appreciative of your partner's efforts to take your feelings into account and help make sure you're socially comfortable, you're sincerely worried that you're holding her back from enjoying her. A more fulfilling relationship. While she does seem to enjoy spending time with you as the two of you sit comfortable, almost contented sons watching old shows you've seen you've each seen two or three times before, your ever increasing fear that your relationship is come, becoming one sided weighs more and more heavily on you. You feel more than you feel more than ever like a burden or a war to her, and it's virtually impossible for you to see what value you could possibly offer her, offer to her in return. Worst of all, this nagging fear has made you feel more self-conscious than ever, withdrawing ever uh, inwards, and you've started to pull away from even uh, away from pull away even from Alex herself. Wow. Wow. Honestly, like I said, this fucking game is being so accurate right now. So, so fucking accurate. And the choices, by the way, the choices that I'm making. Uh, are the uh, act, who are the actual choices I have made or would make in these situations? Just so you know, these are my personal choices uh, based on how I've been with my depression. Uh, you look over Alex uh, at Alex, who has noticed you watching her yet. And you uh, try to parse the expression on her face. You worry that it's one of sheer boredom and bare talents. You wonder if she's thinking about all of the fun things she could have been doing tonight if she wasn't trapped on the couch with you, ordering from one of the same three takeout places that you always order from. Uh, a sense of disappointing creep, uh, but this was a creep, uh, but ugh, I can't fucking speak. A sense of disappointing uh, her creeps over you as you picture what the night could have been if you had just accepted the invitation she had made earlier. <laughs> I know this is a pretty boring Friday night for you. Are you really happy uh, being with me? Being like this? <laughs> She turns to look at you, forehead wrinkled. Why do you ask her that so often? You feel her body stiffen and pull away from yours just a little. Well, I mean, you start, but you are unable to try to think of how to answer. What would I say? Hey, hearing me? Hey, sweetheart. Uh, okay, all right. 
is the goal of my computer. Okay. Alexa, is look, if that were the case, I would let you know. I don't think you're boring. You're more of a homebody than I am. I'm learning how to deal with that. Deal with it? You think you're putting it in your mind? That she see you as a problem to be dealt with. You try to pick her up by a part in your mind. And all of your conclusions lead to your pre previous work. That you're holding her back. You begin thinking that the phrasing was chosen without too much deliberation. And that despite her just at reasserting you, the slip of the time reveals her true feelings. As you picture how much fun she would be having around if you had only accepted an invitation and managed to somehow get over your reservation and anxiety, despite not knowing how you would go about that, she cuddles back up to you. Thanks for putting up with me, you say, staring at the TV without actually watching me. She sighs in response. Wow. Rock, man. It is a breezy Sunday afternoon. You're allowed, you've allowed Amanda, an old friend from school that is in town for the weekend, to talk to you into leaving. To talk you into leaving the house for coffee, for coffee and and chat, uh, catch up. You meet her in a small cafe and talk about what you've been up to since the last since you've last seen each other. And you can't help but feel like there are, are more. What? You, and you can't help but feel like they are a lot more accomplished and interesting than you are while you listen to them talk about their uh, life after school. When it's your turn to brief them on your activities, you feel anxious and ashamed and give a very abbreviated version. You try to talk about your job as little as possible. <sighs> and you feel incredibly boring while you describe it despite her expressing sincere interest in you and your life. Amanda has known you long enough to read your mood and tone of voice. She leans in to ask a question while gently touching your hand, a look of genuine concern on her, uh, 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 <clears throat> look of genuine concern on her face. What's wrong? You feel incredibly anxious and put on the spot as she leans forward. You consider, uh, consider talking about it, but what exactly would you talk about? Where would you start? She'd probably uh, just think you are complaining about nothing anyway. No one likes a whiner. You insist that you're fine and try to shift the topic to one of, uh, one of mutual interest. Uh, she seems as though she's still concerned but lets it drop. Later that night, you play, you play this encounter over and over in your mind and fantasize about what you would have said differently now that you've had time to rim, uh, ruminate it on further and have a moment of self-awareness that you, uh, when you realize the degree of to, uh, to which you tried to stuff these down these emotions, you get very little sleep that night. You are deeply depressed, even activities you used to enjoy hold little or no interest for you, and you exist in a near constant state of lethargy. There's so much of this game. You know what though? Um, I think I'm gonna leave the episode here because I feel like there's there will be a this game is gonna be going su is gonna be super super long. Um, 
but for the most part it's been interesting it's been accurate uh, it's also free on Steam so if you guys want to try this game or Dark Fracture I'll, I'll leave the links in the description so you can try that for yourself uh, and for this game you can have your own choices as well so for the moment um, this has been depression quest <laughs> so again if you guys are going through some stuff if you guys want need someone to talk to feel free to talk to me I have a discord link for you I have uh, Twitter you can you can message me and I and we can talk you know I'm gonna be there for you guys I don't know if everything recorded. I'm looking at OBS right now because that's what I'm using for this recording, and it looks like it's still at the main menu. But I've been reading everything, so I'm sure you guys would be able to follow along, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, this game has been pretty accurate. And realistic, uh, especially from my experiences. So again, I will leave the links in the description. Um, and until I upload again, I will see you next time. I will be streaming later today as well for Spoopy Saturday. We're going to continue Amnesia. Which I believe is still part of this World Mental Health Day, since it's amnesia. It's a mental health thing, and I think it has some uh, paranoia elements to it. So, yeah, um, Twitch will be in the link uh, in the description as well, as always. Um, Stay awake and my cool family. I love you all. See you later.